The world has once again been blessed by another conspiracy theory video from Shane Dawson, the disgraced creator who my name will forever be associated with on YouTube suggested search, even though my own family doesn't really know who that is and still sometimes refers to him as Sean Johnson. I'm not gonna correct them. Tis safer that they never speaketh his true mark in a likely attempt to return to the former glory days of his channel. Shane uses this video to interview his brother slash non-expert on the simulation theory to share new information about a topic that they have no new information about. But that's not all, as Shane also once again proves that he's the master of monotonous A-B storylines by frequently cutting over to the only other thing that's happening during this video, Ryland's family convincing themselves that they're all Matilda by playing a guessing game and ignoring confirmation bias. So join me in breaking down the 2022 state of Shane's boring, underdeveloped content with his time-wasting editing tricks, one-sided, self-serious tone, and poorly written calls to action so that everyone watching at home can also get involved. Which sort of feels wrong, like I've been invited to dig through the wreckage of a plane crash looking for a phone charger. Don't tell me to get involved with your video, this is already a big enough mess, without me adding my fingerprints to the crime scene, you know? So get ready to sharpen in your extrasensory perception. Even though this video actually reduced my ability to see, taste, touch, and hear by putting me instantly to sleep like a toddler or a dog with cancer. Oops, I ended my intro on a line about dog cancer in another Shane Dawson flavored installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Hydrant, hydration-centered solutions that help us stay healthy and productive. Using a Hydrant Hydrate Pack first thing in the morning instantly helps me feel like I'm ready to jump out of bed and get to work, rather than feeling groggy until noon. Hydrant is an amazing way for me to keep my energy up when I need to check off my to-do list, while also helping make sure that I'm getting enough water throughout the day. Hydrant products have three times the electrolytes of sports drinks without artificial color colors, no artificial sweeteners, and no stevia. And thanks to Hydrant, I now have three different ways to keep hydrated and healthy throughout the day. The Sleep Hot Cocoa Mix is made with melatonin and other sleep-promoting ingredients. I drink it hot 30 minutes before bed and it perfectly relaxes me for sound sleep. I love the Pre Plus Probiotic Boosters because it helps support my gut health. Sign up for a subscription of Hydrant's Hydrate Variety Pack and Sleep Hot Cocoa and receive a free pack of the Pre Plus Plus probiotic boosters. Usually worth $67, you can get all of this for just $41.98. That's a 37% saving. Thank you so much to Hydrant for sponsoring this video and providing me the products I need to feel happy and healthy and go the extra mile. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our fit. Wait a second. I look like James Charles when I do this. <laughs> this is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content on the web to determine if each individual clip proves the existence of a greater conspiracy from the government and aliens, or if it's just bullshit fiddle faddle that's been put in front of our eyes as an excuse to not watch TV, which is really where Shane's YouTube videos usually fall for me. Like, what a waste of time his life is. <laughs> Just kidding, but you know what I mean. This is the video that Shane was b -b -b building up. Like, I've got a real conspiracy video coming for you guys, and it's like the most simple and bland thing. I truly had to fight to stay awake while watching this. Like, I missed the whole ending of it. I had to go back and rewatch it because I was like, Ugh. falling asleep. Baby mama, sweetie, let's just jump into it. I don't have time for this. <laughs> so, basically, in this video, Shane pulls in a character we've seen on his channel before, his brother Jared, who seems really interested in topics of conspiracy and in this case the simulation theory. The first scenario is human beings never reach a point in civilization where they're technologically advanced enough to create a simulation. The second, we have no interest in pursuing it or we end up destructing the planet with nuclear weapons before that could ever happen. The third, we're in a simulation. So when you hear like Elon Musk talk about it. Uh-oh, it seems like my brain and eyeballs started to cave in on themselves the closer you got to talking about Elon Musk. 
But I think I was with you up until that point. You said we either will live in a simulation one day, or we won't, or we already do. I can see how when you combine all of those possibilities, it makes it so this theory couldn't be anything but correct. That would be like if I described my panties as either about to get wet, drying out, or currently soaking. Like the only thing we know for sure then is that I have a very sweaty pelvis, which is inconvenient unless I'm on a slip and slide. Know who else? I look like Aja in their All Stars 3 like confessionals with this hat. I don't like my outfit today. <laughs> I think if I lose this hat, I'll feel better. <laughs> I get that that was like the creator of the simulation theories, like theory is like, those are the three possible things. But to me, it just sounds like, yeah, that's like saying it either hasn't happened yet, it's going to happen or it won't, or it's already happened. Like, okay. I really appreciate someone a little more, I guess, well-spoken than Shane talking about this topic. And I would rather watch Jared's YouTube channel than Shane's because he can give you some information without trying to make it seem like the, you know, like don't try to convince me that what you're saying is mind blowing. Let my mind be blown by saying something interesting. Shane is always trying to sell things as like this crazy revelation when it's really just him reacting to it with a sound effect in the background. There's a quote by a quantum physicist named Werner Heisenberg. We're gonna keep talking about the universe. I think it's a very important quote. He says that not only is the universe stranger than you think, it's stranger than you can think. So, ew. <laughs> like, That's too real. Yeah. Ew. When you suddenly say ew like that, I can't tell if you're just really surprised by the quote or if the mustiness of the room you're in just suddenly broke through to your consciousness. And I'm not here judging anybody for having a natural odor, okay? Remember what I just told you about my panties? If I hang my laundry on an outdoor clothesline, I'll get a fine from the EPA. I'm like that toxic woman who made a bunch of people sick at a hospital. That's what my vaginal secretions are. <laughs> toxic. <laughs> what am I saying? My strongest thing is that we teach Remote viewing. Remote viewing. Remote viewing. Remote viewing. I feel like I'm in a Zoom meeting where HR is telling me how they discovered that I was watching a porn star's Instagram live on my work computer. Okay, well, you're more voyeuristic than me, Lori Beth, just by accessing my desktop to spy on me and my time theft. Repeating the same phrase three times like that is clearly a desperate attempt to make what they're saying sound more true, which obviously doesn't work on me because I'm a clever genius. I'm a clever genius. I'm a clever genius. What? I didn't say that technique wouldn't work on you. You're simple. I'm just kidding. I think highly of all of my subscribers, except for some of you are watching this and you're not subscribed. That's so f shady. Uh. Even those of you who are watching this as Shane stands, you should subscribe just because you'll be the first to know when I've made fun of your messiah, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> so Shane explains that he's taking a free course that he's also promoting. And again, I just have to wonder if he has some sort of deal with Lori Williams to promote her free course, or if he's truly just giving her millions of impressions out of the goodness of his heart. Either way, he's taking a course from her to practice his psychic ability of remote viewing, which is like, if there's a picture of something, I can like tell you what it is just by focusing my consciousness. There have been lots of scientific studies about remote viewing and the scientific community has all but rejected it as a possible thing because anything that has ever proven remote viewing, including those Stanford experience that Shane is showing us 1970s footage of, have all been rejected because they had these uncontrollable factors that invalidate the experiment. Like they, they don't take into consideration the possibility of information leakage or people picking up on sensory cues or even unconscious cognitive biases that make these things seem true. For a scientific experiment to be real, it would have to bring up those very real risks to the result and try to diminish them. And none of them do that, including Lori Williams's class. It's the way that he's testing this is like you look at a number of an image file and try to conjure an image mentally of what that picture is and then he'll be like oh there's green and blue and silver and then he'll look at a picture and it's of a building where there's grass sky and glass and it's like whoa even though he's like those three colors you could kind of find in most pictures on google image search listen people can believe what they want when it comes to paranormal or energy or unexplainable things i'm just saying a lot of dedicated full-time scientists have already declared this bullshit 
and Shane's failing to mention that. Maybe he eventually learns about all of those counterpoints before he devotes any more of his life to the Oracle. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing this for a couple hours and I'm gonna see how good I can get at this. <laughs> this is so scary. Is it really? Because I'm pretty sure you're just playing Pictionary with yourself, not astral projecting into the further. What I find kind of scary is that Shane is willing to devote hours of his life to guessing Google images as though it's studying for law school. Like, I just want to know why Shane is now stuck in this rut where all of his content feels like a throwaway vlog that someone would publish in between their real videos. Like, things that are actually substantial and require effort. Because this is just you sitting down with your brother, talking about some message board theories, and then guessing some sh with your in-laws. Like, I don't give a f <laughs> this is a person with access to millions of dollars that he could put towards making these videos good. And I'm not just talking about a $24.99 Shutterstock subscription so you can put stock clips in every f***ing scene. Hire some real professionals, buy some actual equipment, you know, like do something that's worth watching. How is it that he still has millions of subscribers when he hasn't brought anything truly original to YouTube in years? Like it took Shane weeks to create this long-winded video that combines a conversation with his brother that you're already familiar with if you have a older sibling who smokes weed and then you go over to Ryland's family acting astonished when they guess each other's pictures even though they're giving each other charades hot and cold style clues the whole time let's go over to that that fun party <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ugh. Every time you see these three standing around a kitchen island, you just know there's gonna be some real boisterous laughter over some real unfunny sh**. We've really assembled the A-team for this paranormal test group. A trio of people who look like they would get nightmares from a true crime podcast, and a spicy potato chip could instantly kill them. So it's like, Shane has them write a number on an envelope with a picture they printed out in it, and he's gonna very seriously look at that number and conjure an idea of what is in the envelope. That's all that's happening, and it seems like Morgan, Ryland's sister, doesn't really feel prepared to accept that that's the whole video. You never know what to expect. You don't. I know to expect about 45 minutes of what feels like hanging out with someone's mom in a kitchen that was paid for by racist humor. Oh, and of course, an abundance of random noise and static effects that serve to highlight how unsubstantial all of this content is. When you randomly threw that poltergeist TV effect on the screen, I thought Ryland's mom was Zelda Rubenstein on her way to save Carol Ann. Is this what he's actually doing or is he tricking us and we're gonna get shook by something else? It's not. Well, well he's been taking a course, so I'm pretty sure this is the game. I think we're getting bamboozled. I think he's getting No, he might. Really no, Morgan, the activity you'll be doing is just as mundane as it sounds. So please stop trying to predict things that could only happen in a more interesting or well-planned video. Is she confusing Shane Dawson with Mr. Beast? There will be no big budget surprises, Morgan. That would be too professional for Shane Dawson, professional YouTuber. That's why he only makes content that feels like it showed up to work wearing sweatpants. To me, it's like if someone guesses that you're gonna be doing something more cool in your video than you actually are doing, Cut that out. It's a 45 minute video. We don't need someone to get our hopes up. Shane loves to break all of the rules that I have for presenting my own artistic work. The first one being, you know, taking pride in it. But also it's like when I present something to you as an audience, I'm never gonna be like, this is so dumb. I just hope you like it. It's so stupid and dumb and silly. I just, you know, whatever. Because I don't put that kind of stuff out, <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, an Instagram story, I guess, I don't really try that hard on. But even if I felt that way about a video, saying that to you as an audience completely undercuts its impact. Like, you're gonna feel that way about it now. Present it as something that I should get excited about. Bonus points if it's actually something to get excited about. But then he also does this horrible non-content thing where like most of the video involves people deciding what the video will contain or guessing what the video is about when there is no surprise to be had. And that's to say nothing of how one-sided everything is. Like, he never even almost brings up a counter Point. It's like he lives in this propaganda world. So for the cavemen, it might have been very obvious. There was no danger of cavemen knowing about the simulation because they didn't even really understand it. 
because unfortunately for them, the cavemen didn't have access to Elon Musk, the patron saint of all things that the worst kind of men love talking too much about. Here's the thing about Elon Musk. The last thing I need is some Jean Valjean looking little prince all up in my business talking about how much better he'll be at sex in the metaverse. Like whatever you say, weird science, I'm still not going with you to Comic Con. I already promised the thing from Fantastic Four that I would stay in his hotel room. Okay, it's actually an actor who wears the thing costume at birthday parties, but he still has severely cracked skin. I also love the idea that some, you know, prehistoric human just didn't know how to draw buffalo very well. And now century later, Shane Dawson is trying to convince himself that they were actually trying to write out www.yahoo.com. Again, it must be fun to live in a world where coincidences don't exist. And therefore the only explanation is that cavemen discovered fire and the AOL homepage at the same time. Now let's talk about pyramids for a long time. And you take the perimeter and you times it by the same number that you would times the height by, you can get the land mass and the total circumference of the earth. Okay, I feel like this guy is on the brink of joining a cult, mostly because he doesn't understand how triangles work. Ancient Egyptians did not need a magic lamp to make a pyramid that was as tall as it is wide. And you could multiply those measurements by any number to make it the same circumference as any round object, like the moon or an orange. Never mind the fact that the pyramids used to be different sizes because they had limestone casings. So like, what numbers are we talking about? The logic is flawed here. To put it another way, just because my ass is as wide as six football fields, it doesn't mean all football fields were designed to be one sixth the width of my ass. See, I still feel like that's a really engaging math problem, but I lost my substitute teaching job over it. Kids love talking about my ass. Ah, uh, it's all over TikTok. They're microblogging my ass cheeks. Uh, I don't disbelieve the simulation theory. That's the crazy part is like, I accept that it could be true. I just wish that we were learning something new or not stupid about it. The layout of this town of Teotihuacan matches pretty much exactly to what a motherboard on a computer looks what? like. What? It's pretty insane. It's so insane that the implications aren't even that clear. Like seriously, do either of you know what the word exact means? Because you're acting like there are miniature ancient Mayans roaming around on that computer chip like it's Indian in the cupboard. It's also hilarious because this temple literally looks like a motherboard, meaning that one motherboard in the picture. Most computer motherboards look way different than that. And even then, it's not like motherboards are some naturally occurring mineral that they just dig out of the ground and it happens to be in the shape of the map of Six Flags New England, like an engineer purposely modeled a motherboard to look that way. It could have been on purpose or it could just be a coincidence since A, it's not that unique of a layout and B, there's actually a lot of differences other than just a few close shapes. Like there's squares that look the same. The motherboard's not using pyramids, like chill out. In fact, I don't know nothing about these pyramids. I'm getting so confused by the pyramids. Like now you're just talking about a bunch of shit that isn't really related. And I'm supposed to believe it's because I'm secretly a PS3 Sims game? Okay. Even like in China, there's pyramids everywhere, but they cover them. They don't even allow it to be known that there's pyramids in China. They planted grass fields over all the pyramids. Trees are planted and it's covered by soil. So there's no pyramids there anymore. Chinese government never reveals the pyramid. Why? Because they're, they're hiding their history. Because if you want to control a population, the last thing you want them to have is the truth. Do you know how fast society would collapse if China knew about the existence of pyramids? That's why the government did such a flawless job of hiding them under giant scraps of astroturf. Why is China hiding their paranormal history the same way the UPS driver hides my Amazon packages under the welcome mat? I'm cracking up that he's like, they don't want them to know the truth. That's why they planted trees over the shape of a pyramid. Like, I mean, I'm not saying it isn't suspicious that China's not talking about these pyramids, but that could just have to do with regular old racism and colonialism, trying to sanitize the history of their country in some way. I always get confused when people immediately jump to, it must be aliens rather than the world is 
fucked up because of humans. They're like, there's no explanation for that. Um, there is if you look outside your white privilege, maybe. Okay, so Shane goes into this other room and he, or they start guessing. Like one of them put a picture of a, the White House in and Shane seems to have gotten pretty close to that. Although the other two people also guessed pictures and we don't see what he guessed for those. So I guess they weren't as impressive. I didn't think it was snow. I didn't think it was, but I knew what. So I wrote down white in all caps. And I was getting red, like the color red, I underlined it because I'm like, there's something red here. And I even wrote down Target, the store Target. If somebody's getting too analytical, then it's probably wrong. So let's say they're seeing a sharp metal spire and they say, oh, it's the Empire State Building. That's probably wrong. Yeah, that's clearly a very sharp stainless steel butt plug. What the f kind of example was that to show for a steel spire? Shane said, I just wanted to show you my new toy. It's called the colon perforator and it leaves me feeling more holy than a pasta strainer. Okay, mama, have fun with that. Have fun hole punching your hole. I need to not, I need to not. <laughs> Okay, it's time where Shane tries to give us the feeling of having a third aspect of this video without having to actually shoot a third aspect of this video. And you know, the secret weapon for that tactic is freeyoutubedownloader.com so that Shane can steal other people's work. Hey, remember that movie? I'm thinking to myself in my mind, to myself in my mind. Remember that movie? I'm thinking of a movie that came out over 25 years ago and it was about these people who would morph into cats. What was the name of that movie? I'm thinking to myself, Sleepwalkers. That was it, Sleepwalkers. And just like that, the thought's going from my mind we fall asleep first thing in the morning i get up i get on youtube i'm scrolling through the very first thing i see as i'm scrolling down youtube would you be interested in renting sleepwalkers and my answer is not really. Do they have like Mike available for rent? Cause then we can have a conversation. Shane is once again doing that thing where he takes videos from other uncredited YouTubers and then just adds extra B-roll to prevent having to record original material of his own. He said, why should I reinvent the wheel by giving my own examples of singularity when someone I never spoke to before has already done such a great job while wearing a hat that looks like a nipple and hiding out in what looks like the workout room of a North Korean prison. Like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Why do some people get their names on the screen and some don't? How is this the best example of like, simulation is real because that guy saw a movie that he thought about. Like, we've all had experiences where like you think about a movie and then it ends up being on TV the next day. And yes, it's weird. Like, maybe it's the butterfly effect or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just coincidence. You know, like seeing that one random guy's story who is telling the same story that we've all told is not proof. It's just noise. There's one video clip of this like guy Guy and he was filming outside of his bus and there was a girl next to her car and she was literally like a video game character that was broken. She was like doing the same movement with her camera over and over and over again. Or this one of a deer randomly being thrown by something invisible. Quick, someone call Unsolved Mysteries so we can figure out why that lady is bad at taking selfie or how that deer got a brain injury. I would actually be more open to these theories if Shane was also willing to admit that there could be totally normal explanations for these things, but it actually makes him seem less convincing when he tries to present this information as though up until today, we thought it was impossible for animals to fall over sometimes. That deer looks like it could be reacting to the sound of a hunting rifle. It's not like we're seeing it levitating above the ground, humming Hare Krishna, like baby boy, you need to get it together. And I worked at a Macy's in New York and I saw a lot of tourists taking crazy selfies like that with their cameras where they were like, tick, no, tick, no, tick. Like they just get in this zone where they're trying to take as many pictures as they can. So I've seen that exact thing before and my thought wasn't, hmm, that digital Furby person must be glitchy glitching. So I'm just saying there are multiple reasons people could be doing things other than what you're saying. It's so weird that he shows the tower, Hollywood Tower of Terror from Disneyland and they don't call it the Tower of Terror. He just calls it Disneyland ride. It's like, okay, so they didn't guess Tower of Terror. They guessed Disneyland ride. It's also like these images that they picked and the things Shane is guessing all feel specific to him and his favorite things. Like we know Shane loves Disneyland. They were just talking about it in the last video. So it's like already I'm finding ways that this could all be invalidated if a scientist really looked at it. Not that they're trying to be scientifically accurate, but it kind of seemed like they're acting like they're discovering the new law of gravity. <laughs> you watching can join if you would like. You watching can join if you would like. You watching 
can join if you would like. Something about this is just grammatically confusing, Shane. Am I supposed to use my magic mind reading powers to decipher what the direct and indirect objects of this sentence were? One thing I gotta say is that at least Shane knows his audience. I imagine a lot of his fans jumped out of their chairs when he asked them to get a pencil and paper because they really want to feel like they're part of this whole thing and they're desperate for someone to give their life a sense of direction. <sighs> oh. I know you're all really anxious to get to the bottom of this, so here are the test results. It's somewhere warm. It just feels warm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh. That's the biggest thing I feel is warm. And I put a Mastro's because... A Mastro's is what? A steakhouse. Cheesecake Factory or McDonald's. Uh, we're picking up the vibe. <laughs> That's so crazy and unbelievable that all of you randomly and for no reason named a bunch of restaurants that Shane loves and ate lunch at this week. The devil is clearly among us here at the Cheesecake Factory. Quick, grab your rosary beads and pray to the Holy Trinity. Lord, we beg for your protection. In the name of the breadstick, the spicy chicken sandwich, and the skinny licious margarita. Amen. Here's some of that subjective validation at work, which is the cognitive bias that other scientists have called out for ruining these experiments, where people think two random things are completely related just because they both have a personal significance to the person. Ryland's mom was like, I see sunshine, I see fire, I see warmth. And Shane is like, yes, exactly. You're describing the pizza oven at Cheesecake Factory, as well as the molten hot diarrhea that comes out of me after eating Cheesecake Factory. I think we've just proven angels are real. It's also hilarious that they were all like, okay, let's all sit down and think of what Shane could possibly have thought of for his secret picture. McDonald's, Mastro's, cheesecake, cheesecake, french fries, waddling around, dirty clothes. <laughs> like, okay, maybe let's stop. Like everything Shane does, he also has to bring like demons into it. I did do some research today on the other side of the conversation, which is like people who are against it. And there are a lot of people who think it's really dangerous because you're you're opening yourself up to evil spirits <gasps> that could come in and oh. attach to your subconscious, which is like the scariest place oh. to have. This is true. It is really scary to have a demon attached to your subconscious. He's the one who keeps making me buy a Kinder Surprise every time I'm checking out at the grocery store. But it's only because he knows I work really hard and deserve a treat, so it's kind of sweet. It always catches me off guard how everything Shane makes a video about boils down to there being a demon who wants to ruin his life. Like, that's you. Of course, you just spent 45 minutes talking about metaphysics and simulations, then realized in the last 30 seconds how boring that was. So you had to mention a Ouija board as though that would trick us into thinking we just watched a new Conjuring movie. At this point, the best thing Shane Dawson could do for his channel is mess around with the Ouija board, trying to get Captain Howdy to jump out and do some TikTok dances or something, because as it is, this video just gave me a tropical sleeping sickness. But it's okay, because maybe that's just a simulation, and you can all tell me if I simulated a good video for you today or not by letting me know in the comments what you think of this Shane Dawson mess. Also, give me a thumbs up if you want to see me cover even more Shane content. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when Captain Howdy isn't being very nice. That's from The Exorcist, by the way. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive watch parties and bonus episodes. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for remote viewing my ass with me today. I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.